Gruesome Magazine. Hello, once again, I am Doc Rotten, and this is Gruesome Magazine, where we review the very latest in streaming and video on demand horror movies. Each week, my co hosts, Jeff Moore, Crystal Cleveland, Dave Dreher, Christopher G. Moore, and myself, will take a look at various spooky, scary, and gory genre offerings. Tonight, we are reviewing Alone with You. Yes. Let me introduce my crew, starting off with Crystal Cleveland, Living Dead Girl. How you doing? I'm great. I'm. Gosh, I always say I'm going to come up with something fun and witty to say. For what happened? I, I, you know, <laughs> I, um, that's a good question. Well, I'm glad you're here. Now, I'm glad you're now here. you suck. And oh well, that, mm -hmm. uh, that I came in the door with that. All right. Also, for <laughs> this award-winning filmmaker Just... Christopher G. Moore, how you doing, sir? I see doing good. Coming. I'm. Glad to be alone with you guys. Yeah, on this okay. that's better than what I had. Episode. Yeah. <laughs> yep. 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 That that's that's where we're at, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for doing this. Uh, what we're gonna do tonight? We're gonna dive into this review. We're gonna give our first impressions. That will be spoiler free, and then we're gonna get into a discussion. Hey, yep. Easy for me to say. We're gonna get into a discussion, and with that discussion. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get into some spoilers. I think with this one, we might pull them back a little bit. The spoilers are kind of important to the film. And then we'll wrap things up. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> just like that. We'll wrap things up with our final thoughts, our score, one to five, and our favorite scene. And, of course, we hope you enjoy not only this review, but many others we have on the site. And if you want to help us out, it's easy and free to do. Yep. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, or share with a friend. And we'll be so grateful for you. And, of course, totally. Leave some comments down below. And I just want to say there we've been getting a lot of comments lately. I'm a little behind on catching up with them. So, but I do appreciate each and every one. I do get to read them because uh, they come to my phone. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> I read them all. But uh, we'd love to we love to see them and thank you all very much. All right, let's get into this. What does the card say? Oh no. What? What? <laughs> I was just are you, you waiting for me to screw something up? Because I, yeah. I already see, I already yeah. see one thing wrong. Uh, uh -oh. al alone with you, 2022. It is not on Shutter. That is a typo. Um, it is available in theaters February 4th and on demand, digital and DVD February 8th. Uh, the writer and directors are Emily Bennett and Justin Brooks. Emily Bennett also stars along with Barbara Crampton, Megan Lane, Dora Madison, and Emma Miles. Synopsis, a young woman painstakingly prepares a romantic homecoming for her girlfriend. Their apartment begins to feel more like a tomb when voices, shadows, and hallucinations reveal a truth she has been unwilling to face. Mmm, spoopy! Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> and with mm. that, you could probably figure out where this movie is going, but let's find out what our first impressions... We're going to start off with Christopher, yes. Mm -hmm. Christopher, what was your first impression of... <laughs> Oh, no, I knew you were in the spot. You were you. in the spot. Uh, you, don't you see what Doc does? He puts you in. If he puts you in that spot, that means you're going next. Don't, don't give away the magic tricks. <laughs> <laughs> we want to keep people guessing. It's a parlor trick. It's a parlor trick. Uh, yeah, it's a parlor trick. We'll get to trick. that. We'll get to that later. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, you know what? Um, I actually know uh, the actress who was uh, co-director and co-writer on this, Emily Bennett. She's actually friends with uh, an actress named Sarah Gorski from L.A. who um, who was in my film Gut Punched. And so when when we screened a, a Gut Punch at New York City Horror Film Festival, Emily showed up, and uh, so I, I became friends after that. And so I've watched her career online with you know releasing stuff, and and I heard about this film. Uh, you know, a little bit of buzz and stuff around it because um, it was filmed during the pandemic, which you can sort of see. So uh, and a lot of it is a good part of it. Ninety percent of it's probably just her. Um, mm -hmm. And I think she does an amazing job in this film. She, she's um, acting her heart out. I think she she delivers a really wonderful performance, which is sometimes can be very hard for actors to not act anything but other than themselves, because I'm sure a lot of the sounds and things that are in this probably <laughs> weren't there when they filmed it um yeah I, I think this is this feels like it feels almost like a contemporary version of repulsion a little bit you know it has a little bit of that mm -hmm. sort of like person going a little bit crazy you know is it supernatural is it that is it this um and i and there's also uh, some 
interesting moments that are kind of creepy and interesting just visually um and i i i, and I think um and i think for what it is i think considering they're they've shot in this sort of like apartment um it's got some really interesting camera work for it to be something just filmed you know mm-hmm. uh with a limited people and stuff during the pandemic um which is actually um what's it justin justin brooks who co-directed co-directed and co-wrote this as well who they're actually now engaged they got engaged not till a while back um which is like i'm jealous i want to be the i want to be part of that power couple (laughs) with work somebody who's who's uh wants to you know fulfill my creative endeavors but enough about me um Uh, if you're a hot actress, no, um, no, then no. get yourself a drum doing that there. Uh, yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but, um, but yeah, I, I, I thought, I thought this was a very interesting, um, it was a very interesting movie, just sort of the progression of, um, the progression of, of, uh, paranoia that goes on in it, um, and how that's fulfilled through either flashbacks or or visually during scenes or, or um and or even just the sound design i think it works really well i mean i think it i think by the end it kind of it kind of doesn't wrap up in the right way for me um but i think the build up really works um and uh and i think there was some really wonderful moments and I, I think for it to be for me as a filmmaker f- to see how this was crafted during a very limited time you know for because you have a lot of people try to turn out like pandemic type films you know where you don't have can't really be around many people so you have to shoot it a certain way i think the limitations make this a little bit more impressive for me just in what they were able to pull together because there's some really nice shots and stuff that are done within this this one location or and there's even an outside location as well a couple of outside locations, I guess. Um, and I think, I think, you know, a lot of that would fall to the wayside or wouldn't work if, if, if that linchpin of the main actor wasn't impressive. And I think Emily Bennett does an impressive performance in us. So, um, yeah, so I, I, I enjoyed it. I, I think by the end it got a little bit, um, I don't know the right word to describe it. It, it, it gets a little bit, uh messy i guess by the end because it's almost like we sort of know where it's going and so the messiness sort of like you know tries to i guess play around with too much um but overall i I thought it was a very sort of an impressive achievement for the for the limitations they had to work around and and, a really standout performance by emily bennett in it definitely definitely all right crystal you're up next what was your first impression of alone with you Okay, so uh, this is a low-budget film, but I think that they did a really excellent job with what they had to work with. I, I'm, I am in agreement with, pretty, I think, pretty much everything Christopher said. I think Emily did a fantastic job. I think, I think I didn't, I mean, I didn't have a problem with any of the actors. Oh my gosh, actually, Barbara had me laughing. <laughs> and I think Barbara did in one scene in particular, which I don't want to give anything away, she was particularly creepy. I think that (laughs) um, there was a lot of thought put into this film. Um, Because if you notice, uh, you know, the pictures on the walls changed and there was just a lot of attention to detail that I don't know how long it took them to do this, but I don't know if it was easier or better with it just being such a small cast, but it could have been actually better for them to be able to make these, all these changes, just getting the photos printed out and putting them on the walls and doing all this stuff and changing this and doing that. And I think um, there's really some, some superior editing here as well, because that's really the point where it made it work for me because there was some editing things that were done that actually, I was like, ah, you know, I mean, I don't get scared, but I could, when I watch it, I go, that's great. They did that really well. And I like what they did there. And I could see how people would be creeped out by that. And it's something so simple and silly or to me, you know, but it's, it works. So I think that, um, I like the idea of the story as well, but 
yeah, I mean, we all knew where it was going. No, it was obvious. <laughs> yeah, it was. I was obvious. Actually, the whole the whole bit of it was kind of obvious. Well, they dropped clues too. Like mm -hmm. literally, the girlfriend says it at one point. Yeah. You I know? don't think I don't think it hurts the film. No, I don't think it hurts the film either. It's it just makes it a little anticlimactic, I guess. But mm -hmm. but we you know, as people who watch horror and do this all the time, of course we're going to be looking for that anyway. So. I just, I think it was well, well, well shot and well acted and well edited. And actually I didn't even really get bothered by some of the things that I would, like the conversations that she would have with the other friend and stuff. I, you know, sometimes that stuff can get really annoying. It's like, okay, you're doing this again, trying to draw it out. It's like, no. It's like, wrap that up. But no, it, that didn't even bother me. But I do have to say there was, it's, even though it's low budget and they did an amazing job and they did everything they could to make a, really an amazing movie for what they had, it, it, does, it doesn't have the impact that, that some movies do. Yeah. I hate that too, because I do really think they were, you can, I, to me, I'm like, they... They put a lot into this and it shows and it's mm -hmm. good, you know? So, I mean, that's a win really, but it did. Yeah. It didn't like impact me. Eh, whatever. You know, I mean, I'm sure it will other people. I love that they have the, the, the lesbian couple too, or uh, well, LGBTQ plus because the girlfriend is clearly not, but yeah, I love that. I feel, I feel the thing is, it's it, the whole thing is kind of sad. I love that she's grappling with this, you know, being raised in a religious household. I mean, they, they there's a lot to it. There's a lot that they, you have going on in the characters, and I really appreciate it all. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I liked it. Obviously, I liked the movie. It was good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for me, the, the film succeeds on the strength of Emily uh, Bennett. I mean, her performance is incredibly strong, and... and the whole film, you know, I mean, it's, she's, she's the focus of the film and she's like, I think 90% is shortchanging. I think it's 99%. Mm -hmm. um, and she's, you know, if there's somebody in the frame, she's in it. Um, so I, and her performance is very strong. There's a large range of emotions. Um, and it, it, and when she does interact with other people like her mom, which was played by Barbara Crampton, who is wonderful, or her friend or seeing the flashbacks, it's, it's really strong. And um, however, the the story itself I liked, but I found the pacing a little off, and you know, and I think some of it was just like it. it, it uh, I mean, there's a, at a point it starts to focus in uh, toward the the finale, but or the third act. But it's, it's, there was this time where it just felt like it, meandering around trying to. Maybe maybe stretch it out, you know, like you said, with you know. Sometimes it feels that way when you have the phone call again and again and again. Um, and I I I didn't realize what the why the ending didn't register with me, but it is. It was anticlimactic because you kind of knew where it was going. Mm -hmm. And there's one point we'll get to it in spoilers during the third act that I thought, okay, that that you know that could be something real there, and and they kind of do it, but they they pull back from um, that approach. And, and I'll get into what I mean by that here shortly. But so for me, it's, it's a, I, I did like the film. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. I was, I was glued to it, but it, it, um, you're like the same as me. It, it, just it, didn't, wasn't, it yeah. didn't quite have that punch at the end. It didn't quite satisfy. Yeah. Uh, what I'm going to remember from it are two things. Um, one is Emily Bennett, her performance. Mm -hmm. I'm very curious to see what she does next. She's very strong. Uh, actress and uh, how funny Barbara Crampton was. So. Oh my God! I know. Her, her I'm dead. She killed me. Yeah, and it was obvious. Yeah, the, it was brilliant the way they did it. You know, mm -hmm. because you you could you could quickly figure out that this is a pandemic film, and we've seen a number of them, to be fair. Uh, and uh, the way they bring the characters in is is pretty strong. And they're, they're yeah yeah it's it's a little wobbly and messy, but it, the yeah. The character itself is the is the tie that keeps it all together. So it's, yeah, I, I think I'm meandering, so I'm going to stop. <laughs> well, they're they're very clever 
they're they very are, clever. Very like they, they like the 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 whole covering the windows thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, I buy it. That's great. You know, it I, that takes so many issues off the table. You don't have to worry about what time of day it is. What time? I mean, I'm like that's. I mean, that's brilliant to me. I, I don't have a problem. There's a lot that I was like, okay, good well, job. Even, well, even when they had like the phone glitching and, you know, there's, or the, even the, like the computer, the time went off the computer. I mean, the, 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 the visual effect elements, I think worked really well. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah. I, you know, and, and I, I, I think I sort of in the similar camp as you guys when it comes, I feel like it's a very, it's a very simplistic idea that, that, that maybe through editing they kind of worked out how the story would play out, but um, but it's it all rests on the performances to where I think if the performances were there, it would be much more obvious. Oh gosh, this movie is plotting or, or whatever. Because mm -hmm. I think, I mean, I, I'm the same way. Because a lot of times when you have a conversation that seems kind of fake, but a lot of the, the dialogue seemed very naturalistic. Yeah, it did. The part where good. she's talking to her friend, come on, what are you doing? Yeah. Just yeah. kidding. You're I mean, always waiting her, for her. Yeah. I laughed out loud mm -hmm. with the friend because her friend was like so much a, sort of a fun character. Mm -hmm. How she's like, you know, uh, playing around with her and stuff on the phone. That seemed like a very natural conversation, you know, or even like the, the Barbara Crampton conversation, which you could sort of see how that, that conversation was kind of, uh, ramping up as it went along when but yeah she was also coming out when barbara was like try she's like i'm sorry i didn't mean it like that like i told it totally seemed real like she's she's mm -hmm. passive aggressive but she's trying not to be she's like no no i didn't mean it you know like that but she is being like that yeah, she and, does mean it like that she didn't realize it yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. I, it was authentic. It was authentic that that conversation between her and her mom. I really. Well, oh, and I, I think that's I, and you know and again you know I, Emily and Justin they they co-wrote this and so I don't know how if there was any kind of improvisation elements you know because sometimes through improvisation you kind of tweak the dialogue to make it seem more naturalistic because sometimes written on the page may not work saying it in, in front of a camera but those moments felt realistic. And, and not boring realistic, mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't just like, oh, you know, you know, like, go, let's go get some milk at the grocery store type <laughs> thing. But um, it, it felt natural and and you felt like you were sort of eavesdropping on these conversations. And I think that's that kind of like sucked you in, you know, when you're watching it. And let's be real. It could have it could have been really silly and really awkward that she's stuck in her apartment and, you know, I, I, every every choice she made, I I could buy. I was like, okay, she's trying to get out. She's call calling this. I, it it wasn't. It didn't feel like a made like, you know, like where they're forcing it, mm -hmm. and normally does. So they made things work that honestly shouldn't work. <laughs> well, I'm just yeah. saying, like it's stuff I'd normally be bothered by, but it didn't bother me in this. But but you know, and then the, even some things I think, I mean, I I will say that there's certain elements of creepiness that kind of worked for me, you know, whether mm -hmm. there's a scene that happens when she's looking through the little eye hole in the, in the mm -hmm. door, yeah, which yeah, kind of like, um, or hearing that voice, which almost became very evil deadish <laughs> by the end of it, you know? Um, I, and actually probably one of my favorite moments is a simple gag of the picture changing in yeah. frame mm -hmm. that I was like, Oh, did I just, I actually yeah, had to go back. I but then, I, then I thought my, mm -hmm. my mind was playing a trick. Did I see that picture move? Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and I, I, those, and there's even a little bit later on, you can see it blink yeah. in, in the picture frame. And so I was like, Oh, that is, that's actually kind of Clever. brilliant. I know like those little showing, things. That's what yeah, I said. Mm -hmm. Because they then it almost lot. puts you in the mindset of this character. Who's, you know, is going crazy to some uh, length and, or, you know, having a breakdown, and you, you're 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 t you're in you're in that uh, roller coaster ride along with her, and it, and it, it, I I love that aspect of it. Things like that, I think, very simple type gags. I don't know if it's a gags the right word, but simple type yeah. tricks mm -hmm. that no kind of everything. Work. It, like there are simple because let's be real, uh, it's a saran wrap head, and it worked for me. I totally was. I was like, yeah, that's good. Like the they. <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's nothing. It's and it's so simple. And I'm like, yeah, 
Yeah. Although when she pulls that sheet off of that. <laughs> oh, that mannequin that was dummy, painted beautifully, mannequin, wasn't it? I, I was loved like, it. And I was like, yes. put it back on, put it back on. That was, was yes, it was beautiful. I, I was just I waiting, love the crackling I was waiting for effect. another one to move. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh crap. Yeah, yeah. You, just, you just pulled the one off the wrong one. No, that one's going to move. But they did. Yeah. Uh, for me, I, I like what you guys are saying because the roller coaster thing is a good analogy because I don't think it the highs got high enough. Because I, I don't know if emotionally I felt the panic I was seeing the characters go through, right? Because the, I'm not sure the camera work or the, uh, or the, the framing of the of the story. Um, sometimes it did, like you said, through the, the through the eye hole and stuff like that. But other times, I didn't feel you know that rising panic. It felt a little a little like a like. Well, I I don't think that any of it w- was really super duper panicky. I don't well, think she well, was. All, or, you know, I think, like, well, I think, I think it, toward the end, it definitely was. I think it built mm-hmm. a little bit, mm-hmm. and then it stayed on this even keel on the right. same level. Right. It, and almost became very repetitive to where it's like, like for me, it's like she kept going back to that vent and talking and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it was... Actually, I, mean, I, I wish they had established more of the relationship between the two girls, actually. I wish I could have seen mm-hmm. a little bit more of that. I think that's a, a problem with, you know, being... In COVID, you really of don't course. have that time to have them interact. They they did have a little bit. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, because, I, I didn't you feel the connection. Bit, right? But I yeah. was also actually wondering if she just imagined it all in her head or whatever, because there's yeah. so little. You know, need a, need a little bit more of the single white female aspect of it. So. Uh, yeah, and I think I think for right? me, I think we also have expectations going into things to where if it's very obvious where it's going, I keep expecting some big, even bigger twists. Yeah. <laughs> and when it, fulf- and when it fulfills exactly what you thought it was the whole time, and it's like, I think that's where you're like, okay. Well, that, okay. That, and that's what I'm that saying. Climactic. You need that, mm-hmm. you need that crescendo. You need that, that, and it, it kind of like went, you know, like you said, it was like, yeah. And, and, and that's fine. There's purpose for it, but it felt, it didn't, register right it didn't kind of sit but i feel like i'm boohoo in the film and i'm not trying but to i know like you're it. not i know you liked it i totally get like we're nitpicking because because there is something lacking and mm-hmm. i think we all see it and we all know that there's something it's just hard to really put put a grasp on it because we all enjoyed it and it was well, well made well it, it almost feels like um sound design too, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah i mean the, the sound design there's i mean there's even the even though the editing gets a little bit frenetic towards the end, there's some really cool things they do with editing in it. Mm-hmm. Um, but then it's like I've, it's almost like you know, like the ring when you see these little snippets of the video and then mm. you see it sort of play out in the very end. They had a little bit of that, but it just then it just didn't didn't have that same kind of impact when you see that stuff. To where it's like, okay, we are we already. So then it's like, okay, we already know how this is pretty much what happened. So, but 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 in the midst of them playing that out, it had some really beautiful framing and cinematography, mm-hmm. you know, where there's like scenes where she's framed in between that little beach area and, uh, or when she's sitting on that little trunk and stuff. I mean, there's some really sort of beautiful shots they were able to pull off in such a, again, in a limited capacity and what they had, you know, yeah. to they, create it, you know, and or even really inside had, what, the house two places two two locations yeah or even inside the house there's some really clever camera work that really works for what they were creating you know from different angles to where it's like uh at, you know like the thing i shot just recently I, I was like i wish we did cooler things with the camera and this was like oh wow they did really cool things with you know different lenses and mm-hmm. shooting from different angles that that doesn't make it very boring and 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 having these scenarios play out inside like the house mm-hmm. that house that that apartment is really cool or whatever it's really I, know, nice. I was like well that's got to be mm-hmm. expensive if you're it's like that place is nice. <laughs> <laughs> whatever that crazy room is with all the mannequins whatever well cool. it was a photography studio remember because the girlfriend's like aren't they crazy they're so dark they're so spoopy yeah mm-hmm. yep. i was like they are spoopy and i like them mm-hmm yeah, I'd probably scare the shit out of myself if every time I go downstairs oh my God. if I had that. <laughs> I'd poop my pants for sure. All right, well, let's go ahead and wrap this one up. Let's give it our final thoughts, our score one to five, and our favorite scene, Christopher. Let's keep with it. You start us off. Um, yeah, I really, I really enjoyed this. I think, I think, I think, um, I think this is one of those things to where, uh. 
the 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 main re the one of the biggest reason it works is because of Emily Bennett's performance, you know, and and I think um, with her also being a co-director and a co-writer on it, uh, she's a very integral part in in making this happen. And then also um, Justin Brooks, uh, who helped to sort of like craft the stuff behind the camera as well as a co-director and co-writer. So I think they really to be able to create something like this within the pandemic and to look sort of really good because you have people that have a buttload of indie crew working on stuff and it doesn't look to this level and mm -hmm. probably people you know spend a whole lot more money and it doesn't look as polished as some of the scenes true. Like this true. um so regardless of uh maybe not playing out story-wise like you want it to be or being as sort of uh ramping up to that level that we'd like it to be it still works for what it is you know with and uh, and just to be able to deliver uh, naturalistic dialogue and stuff uh, or, you know, integrate flashbacks that don't feel as intrusive as, as we've seen in some films. Um, yeah, I think it works. I think that this is a really well done film and, and um, it definitely makes me excited to see what um, the super duo <laughs> does super in the duo! future, <laughs> which I'm jealous, jealous of power <laughs> couples. How dare you be talented and, be in jelly. love Blah. so jelly um, so jelly yeah but i mean yeah but again i i think there's there's a lot you can see a lot of the passion mm -hmm. in the creation of this and and uh and to make it during the pandemic i think is even more impressive um so i'll give it i'll give it a four out of five okay. I, nice. I, 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 I i was really i think you have some projects it, it's all way it's it's all sort of like made good just by having really talented people in front of the camera and uh, i think her performance is one one of the biggest parts that makes this uh, definitely watchable and, and enjoyable just in those moments where she's talking to a friend on the phone and stuff um as for favorite scene um i, I will say the moment when the the um when she's talking on the phone and the the picture Changes. changes oh nice i i i i, I was i was almost uh, almost gasp <laughs> <laughs> and and when when i had to rewind it <laughs> watch it again to make sure rewind it, was, it i was like am i Show going crazy <laughs> i mean i'm not exactly the most standing individual to begin with so i was like Whoa. it's funny because uh, i did too i get it uh, i was yeah, like wait do i do need do i need to go back on psych medication um <laughs> uh but yeah i i, I love that moment because it, it, it's it's all it's a very it's a it's almost a very simple effect yeah to pull off and it's all in camera and and it's one of these things to where you're focusing on her now the corner of your eye you notice something change and i thought that was a really brilliant way to sort of show her show her mindset and and be in her shoes or, or bare feet i guess because she was, <laughs> didn't have uh anything on her feet but um but yeah i, I really yeah, I think that's probably yeah, barefoot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway. <laughs> I'm not good with words sometimes. Uh, just like you, Doc. Um, oh, yeah. oh, uh, oh, well, I guilty, know, I guilty, guilty. <laughs> I want to be like you when I grow up. Um, but yeah, I, I'd say that's probably my favorite scene, just because of how it impacted me. I was like, oh wow, that's really cool. Nice, nice, Crystal. You're up next. Your final thoughts, your score, your favorite scene. Okay, so clearly I like the movie. I think it's great. I think that they did, man, a really good job for what they had. They they did a lot with, you know, limited space, limited people. Uh, yeah, I mean, it worked for what it was. I'm I'm gonna give it a three and a half because I'm 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 doing it as a normal. You know, like we rate everything else. I totally get Christopher giving it a four, though. Oh, I should bump it up for the Sphinx, because you know how much I love Sphinx cats. They're like, oh, they are. Yeah, I forgot so they are. There's a there's Baxter. A cameo. Cameo Baxter. Speaking of my favorite scene, <laughs> I think we know what my favorite scene is. Then, what's that? It involves a microwave and a cat. No. Because I'm <laughs> sick like that. <laughs> oh, I love. Sphinx cats, especially. <laughs> it was funny though. I was like, I was like, oh, oh. 
brutality. You meanie. All right. Yeah. I, uh, okay. So for me, um, I, I'm not going to say much more about what I think, but there's something else I want to comment on. And I've always felt that there's a difference between uh, the way a festival film feels versus a theatrical film. Mm -hmm. And I've always wondered why I felt that way. And I think this film has finally kind of illustrated that to me. And I think it's the intimacy, right? Because this film feels more intimate because of how it's, how it's constructed, how it's filmed, the, um, the, the bare bonesness of it, if you will. And so it gives us this intimacy and, and that really plays well in film festivals. And I think this film would do, or has done or should do really well in film festivals because it feels that kind of film. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. And um, and like I said, I, the, the performance is wonderful, really, really strong. And uh, I'm, I gave it a three and a half as well. I, I, that's where I was at. So, and I felt like I should be giving it more, but that's where I'm sitting. Uh, my favorite scene, okay, I'm just going to go with the mannequins. I mean, there's a couple other I things. I did love them, too. There's, there's a, a couple, lot, actually, yeah. that I wrote. I was like, oh, yeah. Um, I Actually, you know what? I'm going to change it. Um, my the, fa the, the scene that stood out the most to me and, and the direction that I was hoping it would go, the mannequins were wonderful, though, by the way, is when the crate opens up and you see the hand come. Right. And <laughs> I wish they had done more with. The, I was like, oh, exactly, ooh, exactly. Ooh, girl, that that had some some real yeah. creepy factor to me. Um, some kind of like if she had been flipping, flipping like a, them off. <laughs> maybe that might have been something that would have been hilarious. But it's some revenge factor, right? Like you know, what have you done? You know, um, kind of thing. And uh, it it, it, it kind of went there and then and then pulled back. I mean, we mm -hmm. still got the the aftermath of that in some way, but not the way that that particular scene kind of promised. Mm -hmm. It promised a little something else because of the, you know, the, what, what the hand rising up out of it kind of implied. But I really liked that. I thought, you know, the way it was lit up and everything and everything was going on at that time. That, that, that was fun. <laughs> but if not that, it's those damn panicans from the very get go from the very, even when it was in that little flashback, when the two of them were setting it up. Or, you know, I don't know, was it two I'm setting up or one I'm setting up and just dialogue over top of it, but whatever it was. I was like, oh, no. So there you go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, be sure to check this film out when it's uh, out on VOD and let us know what you think down below and uh, see if you, you know, if we missed something, let us know what you think we missed. Love to hear it. Crystal. Hey. Christopher, thank you for joining me. No problem. Thanks for having oh. us. All right. Let's say good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs>